Hello and welcome aboard La Mer, my 1980 39-foot Cavalier built in New Zealand. I bought her in late 2017 and she's been my home ever since. I've spent the last several years working to make her more comfortable, upgrading old and outdated systems, as well as repairing some problematic structural issues. It's a work in progress, but I am making headway. My near-term goal is to sail and explore the local islands here along the California coastline, all in preparation for my goal to ultimately take off on an extended offshore adventure. Good morning, everybody. So uh, I'm getting ready to go out for my first sail of the year in uh, 2022. Um, not taking La Mer out, but I'm going out on my friend's boat. This is Claire de Lune, captained by my good friend Don Anderson. And uh, you may have seen the uh, video I did of a tour of Claire de Lune a couple years ago. Um, it was actually up for sale by the, the then owner and uh, ended up, uh, my friend Don bought it. So uh, there she is, a uh, 32-foot Union uh, built in 1984. There he is. Come on out, Mr. Anderson, and say hello to everybody. Hey, good morning. How you doing? We're heading out to uh, Santa Cruz Island. So it uh, should be an interesting uh, sail, being that uh, we got gale force uh, the last day or so of our trip. So hopefully it goes good. So this will be the first uh, first trip to the islands on yes. uh, Claire de Lune, huh? Yes. Nice. Yeah, exciting. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful boat. Yeah. Behind me there is my, our friend Steve. Steve is a, a wild and crazy guy, Steve Martin, um, but not that Steve Martin. And yeah. that's his boat, Nashira. And man, they just came like a bat out of hell up on us there. And uh, yeah, pretty cool though. But yeah, we're gonna hook up with them later yeah, we're on. Yeah, evened out here. So yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful boat. Uh, Don and I were out on that boat a few years ago um, in a gale. big wind. First time I'd gotten seasick in a long time. Yeah, that was not pleasant. That's why I didn't get much video that day. I was, uh, all you would have seen was me blowing chunks. <laughs> show you Don's autopilot set up here. See he's got a, a wheel here, but there was no autopilot rigged up for the wheel. So what he did is on the emergency tiller shaft that, uh, where's my finger at? Oh, it goes right there. He's rigged up a short little tiller here and then he's got his autopilot attached to that. And that's what's steering the boat right now. And he's testing that as kind of an interim to the idea of possibly removing the wheel, excuse me, removing the wheel altogether and the pedestal and everything and replacing it with a full size tiller which he, he enjoys the tiller that's his preferred method of steering and that's probably how this boat was originally rigged i think this whole wheel and pedestal was a uh, an addition to the boat well we made it to uh smuggler's cove or we're about there and boy it turned out to be really beautiful here but man it was quite a uh Quite a trek getting in there. Had probably 20, close to 25 knots of wind and some heavy seas. And 
yeah, it's pretty intense. But yeah, now it's nice and calm. We're on the lee of the, the island. So the water's calm, the winds are light. We're just motoring in now to our anchorage. And there's a few boats up here. Let me turn you around. I don't know, I see what looks like maybe three sailboats and a couple power boats. And there's two anchorages here. There's Yellow Banks, and I believe that's Yellow Banks there. And then there's Prisoner's Harbor, which is over that away. Beautiful island. Beautiful on here. Wow. So on this sign here, you have this whole section here, pretty much everything you cannot do, cannot do, cannot do, cannot do. And then the things to do, one little paragraph. <laughs> Terrible. But unfortunately in the world we live in today, you need to have a lot of that. Otherwise the animals uh, go crazy. It's a little fox. Oh, look at this baby. Hey little guy. Going on. Hey, where are you going? Well, I didn't bring you no food. Uh, she peed. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that little baby. So it's been uh, been a few months since I've been on the island. Although the last time, which is June of last year, was on the other side at uh, Prisoner's Harbor. And that was our uh, burial ceremony for my good friend, Buddy Staccardo. Um, this time we're on the other side of the island and we're at uh, Smuggler's Cove. And the very first place I ever anchored the very first time I ever went sailing, which was probably back in 83-ish, 84 maybe, was uh, here. Now we didn't come on to the island that time, but uh, went sailing with a couple friends of mine, friend, a friend of mine from college, and uh, yeah, my first time ever sailing. So. This is where we are, so this is uh, taking all these years to get back here. So having never been on this side of the island, we decided to take a little walk up the trail and see what we would find. Really green the island up. Doesn't that seem like a little Irish cottage there with a windmill? Now, I wonder, do they utilize this building for anything now? I don't think so. I think it's just there for, uh, just keep its stature. 1889. There it is. The year it was built. Yeah. Probably and look at that sundial built into the side. I don't know, let's see if you can, if I can zoom in on yeah, that. I see it. So there's a sundial there. I wonder how accurate it is. It says one, two, three, four, about four o'clock. Is that right? I have no idea what time it is. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's probably close to four. Maybe 20 to four, 20 till. We continued along the trail, which took us to the top of a ridge that had a great lookout across Smuggler's Cove out to Anacapa Island and the mainland. Way in the distance there is Boney Mountain. And 
been hiking up there before a few times with my dad. After our brief little walk, we came back to Claire de Lune and had a couple hours to kill before we headed over to Nishira to join Steve, his two sons, and his lady friend for dinner. We didn't take any video of the dinner, but we had a great time. Everybody just talking and laughing, sharing sea stories, and eating large amounts of chocolate, and drinking copious amounts of herbal tea. It got progressively colder throughout the evening, and by the time we got back to Claire de Lune, it was bitter cold. Good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, and uh, yeah, I had a pretty good night. Wasn't too uh, too swelly, too rocky rolly. Don's boat, uh, pretty stable boat. And uh, got a bit cold, but had a nice warm sleeping bag. Yeah, my only problem was uh, my back was killing me. Uh, I've got my sleeping on my boat set up pretty good where I can get nice and comfortable if don't have too many back problems that's when I'm sleeping but yeah I just didn't have that situation here it was kind of cramped up and everything so yeah my back was killing me so we've had breakfast and our coffee and just kind of chilling out for now you think we're gonna stay here the rest of the day or go to a different anchorage yeah, so we'll be here, we'll spend another day here, spend another night, and leave uh, first thing in the morning back home. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I mean, already it's nice and blue skies here over the island. A little bit of clouds and overcast offshore here. Um, that'll probably end up burning up too later on. Gust of 35. Well, for now, the weather was beautiful, so we decided to take another little walk on the island. Now, if you follow this trail, this will take you over to Scorpion, an anchorage about three and three quarter miles away from smugglers. We weren't up for essentially a seven plus mile round trip walk so we decided just to stay locally and just take in some of the nature the hills the flowers the scenery we headed back to shore and on the way i stopped to take a picture of don taking a picture a little later in the afternoon uh, the weather started changing it got uh, dark and it got cold and very windy in fact it got so bad that uh, don and i were contemplating leaving that night uh, making a evening trip home so that we could beat what we felt was going to be even more severe weather the next day. But ultimately we decided to just hunker down, spend the night, and just get up early in the morning and take off. Hey, good morning. So uh, we're getting ready to take off this morning and head back home. Uh, been tough trying to get a good weather, a beat on what the weather is. Uh, weather Channel out here all morning long has given up given us nothing but surf reports, which uh, by all indica indications means it's probably not a good day to go surfing, but since that's not what we're doing, um, kind of useless to us. The latest report we got last night was it was going to be, you know, like 15 to 25 um, in the morning with gusts up to 40 in the afternoon, so our plan is to get out of here at 7 and hopefully by the time those those bigger winds kick in we'll be pretty much close to home and the reports for right on shore there were, were much better than what they were talking about out here in the island. So our goal is to try to beat that so we're just going to have to manage our sail sails accordingly and just hope for the best but uh, it's gearing up to be pretty nice out there the sun's coming up and uh, yeah you know, I don't 
think it's going to be too bad. So we'll see. Alrighty, so we just left the Anchorage Smuggler's Cove and have no idea what our what the wind speed is. We don't have an anometer. Anometer. Probably 25. But yeah, 25. That was kind of what was projected as the uh, minimum range. So hopefully if we get lucky and that's the most we get, I think it's pretty manageable because we're uh, just have a double reef main up. But like I said earlier, uh, yesterday, they were projecting gusts up to like 40 or 45 in the afternoon. So that's why we got a bit of an early start. Hopefully we can uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Breaking wave. All right. Clear to Loon took that like a champ. <laughs> While we did have waves of about uh, 8 to 12 feet and winds within the 20 to 25 knot range, we never did see the upper threshold of 40 knot winds that were being projected. Eventually, Nashira caught up to us. They were under sail with a double reefed main and a staysail, but at this point, they went ahead and doused the staysail and put up their jib. The rest of the trip into the harbor was easy going. And overall, we had a wonderful trip. Definitely look forward to getting back to Smuggler's Cove soon. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a like. And we'll catch you next time. Until then, cheers. <laughs>